Up to this point, we've been working on the flat panels of the desk. But uh, now I want to show you a little bit about how we're going to veneer the front curved panels, the column-like uh, curves on the right and left side of the front of the desk. Uh, first, I've made up a substrate, a curved substrate, on which I will apply the veneer. Now, I'm not going to go through the details of how I made this substrate because you can see that if you go to the mantle construction videos, parts two, three, and four. In those videos, I make up the bending form, which is similar to this one, and then I apply the, um, the uh, bendable plywood to the form and glue up the substrates, and you can see how all that is done. Now, in the case of the desk, the curve is about a 16 and a half inch uh, radius or so, and uh, I'm going to be veneering the outside with the show veneer, you can see it here, which is curly maple. But I'm also going to veneer the inside, the concave side, with plain maple. And the reason I veneer both sides is because as the veneer glue sets, the veneer has a tendency to shrink just slightly, and that's called pull. It actually pulls on the substrate. Well, if you want the substrate to maintain its shape, what you want to do is have the same amount of pull on the front and the back, and that's why I'm going to veneer both sides. Now, I have made up my form, as again, you can see that in the videos of making the mantle, and I've also glued up, or excuse me, taped up the, uh, the maple uh, inside veneer, and I've actually used a little veneer tape to tape that to the form just temporarily so that it doesn't shift while I'm doing the glue up. And then the reason I'm even showing you this part of the process, which I, again I said is practically identical to what I did when I made the mantle, is when I made the mantle, I glued the inside veneer by simply taking the substrate, laying it on the table, spreading the glue on, and then laying the maple veneer inside. Well, what I found was is there was a a little bit of a tendency for the veneer to, to expand a little bit as the uh, glue soaked in, and it caused just the slightest little ripple of buckle on the inside. Of course, you'll never see it, but I thought there's got to be a better way to do this. So now what I'm doing is I'm laying this maple veneer out, out here, then I'll apply the glue to the inside, then I'll place the substrate right on there, and now, because the substrate is uh, basically forming this maple around the form, I think I'll have a better, uh, a better glue joint. And then I'll apply glue to the outside, the show face of the substrate, and then I'll apply the curly maple veneer, and then all that will go into the vacuum bag. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Stand by. Here we go. The glue I'm going to be using for this veneering is called uh, Better Bond Cold Press veneer glue. It's a medium tone. It's sold by Veneer Supplies. It's a one part glue uh, that I don't have to uh, mix and I found that it uh, works very well and doesn't have uh, any bleed through. That's where the, the glue tries to bleed through the veneer. And what I'm doing is I'm rolling it on with a foam roller. I'm trying to get this to be about the consistency of uh, thick paint. You don't want too much on them, but you don't want to starve the joints either. Okay, I've got that on there. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply the adhesive to the outside. Again, rolling it on about the consistency of thick paint. Now I've made little marks on my veneer so I know where the center line is, so I can line it up exactly with the center line of the substrate. Now it's 
time to put all this into the vacuum bag. Notice how the veneer is starting to curl up a little bit because it's absorbed some of the moisture. I've got to be very careful that I don't break it as I put this into the bag. I've got to get this into the bag far enough so that the air inlet barrel right here is not on top of the veneer because that's a little bit of a rough spot and you want the, the plastic of the bag to fall nice and evenly over the entire veneered surface. Check everything, make sure it looks good. Okay, placement is good. Now it's time to seal up the bag. Maybe this is a good time to show you uh, the coordination between this desk and the mantle. As, as you know, this piece is uh, one of the vertical uh, columns, if you will, on the front of the desk. And it's designed to go hand in hand with the similar motif on the mantle, this being the uh, fireplace mantle. Same curvature, well, different radius, but same idea, same orientation of the figure. And so this is going to be a very nice set. There's a number of substrates that can be used in veneering. Uh, probably the smoothest substrate to use is medium density fiberboard, or MDF. MDF is this uh, brown uh, paper material that's pressed together with, uh, with, with a resin and it forms a stiff, uh, solid uh, uh, board. Uh, you can get it in large sheets. MDF, although smooth, uh, a couple of, couple of drawbacks. It's heavy, it doesn't hold screws as well as some other materials, and uh, it's not as strong as other materials. <clears throat> so I prefer to use plywood as my substrate because it does have good strength and, uh, <clears throat> and it holds screws well. Now there's a number of types of plywood you can get, but one of the uh, risks with plywood is, is that uh, there may be voids in the ply. So the way plywood is made, of course, or various thin plies of wood are glued together in a stack 
And here's a case of uh, half inch plywood. And uh, if you can see here, here's a void, a place where uh, the second ply underneath the veneer, uh, there just is not wood in that small little area there. And of course, uh, if I veneer right over that, then that void could telegraph a depression up through the thin veneer that would be visible. So in order to use this particular plywood uh, and uh, get a, a, a void-free surface and add some strength, I'm going to laminate a piece of high-quality 1 8 inch plywood uh, onto this and uh, I'll just glue one on each side. This will give me a nice smooth surface. It will also add some strength and rigidity to what's, to what's going to be the sides of the desk. Uh, I'm aiming for about a three-quarter inch thick side of the desk. I want it to be very rigid because you can see this is a very large side. And uh, I'm gluing a piece of this eighth inch on each side and then veneering on top of that. I'll get the rigidity I need. The inner sides of the boxes on the, on the desk uh, and the center panel were veneered, of course, with the thick uh, veneer that was sawn on the bandsaw. But the outer sides are going to receive the same uh, curly maple that we used on the curved laminates on the front pillars. I've got a stack of the uh, curly western maple here that uh, is all book matched. It all comes from the same lot, and I'm about to cut it to the correct width. I've already cut uh, one side and trued it up in the uh, in my jig with the with the jack plane, as you saw earlier, uh, that I did with the thick veneer. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the thin veneer, but uh, the way you cut this is a whole lot different uh, because it's thin veneer. It gets cut with a veneer saw instead of uh, a larger tool and a veneer saw is simply a handheld saw with teeth uh, that are sharpened uh, kind of like little razors. That's the idea is to sharpen these so they're razor sharp and so as opposed to, to, to typical sawing action what you're really doing is trying to uh, to slice the veneer with these with these teeth. So I've got a straight edge, I've got a, a piece of plywood on which I can do this and the action is simply so hold down your straight edge and pull. And there we are. The pack is, uh, is cut to width. Now all we have to do is uh, clean up the the small defects that you get when you saw, we'll do that using the uh, jack plane in our, in our uh, rig here, in our clamp. The taping procedure for the veneer sheets is just like I did with the thicker veneer. Uh, I've got five of these short pieces that will go crossways, and then I'll follow up with a long piece along the length. I'm using the non-perforated tape uh, as it dries. It'll uh, shrink a little bit, help pull the joint together. I've got my little uh, stamp uh, wetting pad here and an iron set to a medium low heat to quickly dry the pieces of tape so that the wood doesn't uh, absorb a lot of moisture and help pull the joint together a little more quickly.
don't want to leave the iron in one place too long. I'm trying to not cause the wood to dry up, particularly in one area and deflect. Just want to get the tape in place, and there we go. We've got a good joint. I've got the thin veneers taped up. <clears throat> I've got the curly maple for the front, and just some plain maple for the inside that, that uh, you know the drawers will be against because uh, I'm veneering both sides to equalize the veneer stresses on each side of the panel and help keep it straight. So we'll just go ahead and put some on here, see how it, how it uh, spreads out. And then uh, I'll put the veneer on, tape it in place gently, flip this panel over, veneer the other side, and then slip it into the vacuum bag and put it under uh, vacuum. Let the veneer set, or let the glue set. And there we are. The operation of uh, placing the panel into the vacuum bag was just like we had done with the thick veneer. So nothing new there. Got about 25 inches of vacuum. And we'll leave this to sit for an hour or two, and then we'll glue up the other panel. Let's see how this first panel glue up uh, went. Looks like it turned out very well. Now we'll let that cure some more and then uh, dampen the tape to remove it and uh, trim it up and start using it.